Hi everyone and welcome to Salmon Rat Care. So I'm going to do a really quick video, um, well hopefully a lot quicker than my last one which I've just finished and then thought oh I'll do this one while I'm, I'm um, around. So this is one on urine analysis strips and I want to do it on this because these are probably one of the single most useful diagnostics tools that I've got for the rats beyond myself, my eye and um, reading how they're doing. Oh, you no, know, I can see you think. <laughs> thing is determined to go on the floor um, she's already been on it once hey, you have a look. Um, yes so these urine analysis strips are incredibly useful things to keep in the first aid box that when you spot something's not quite right about your rats and um, usually one of the first things I do is reach for the strips um, so first of all what are the strips how do you get hold of them so these are just human Sorry, mug is now crumpling on my uh, microphone. Um, these are just human urine dipstick tests. I got these off Amazon, but there are plenty of other places you can get them from. You can normally get them from local chemists as well. Um, in humans, you take this little strip and you pee on it. In a rat, it's a little bit more challenging because the rat does not have um, the best kind of understanding of when to pee and when not to pee. Um, but effectively you do a similar thing, you, what you want to do is get a clean surface, so I quite often use this work surface, give it a good clean, clean down, get the rat up first thing after it's been asleep, top tip, um, it does help you get them to pee on demand, put them on the surface and hopefully they'll give you a nice big puddle. Grab them very quickly before they trample through it because they've got a knack um, and then take one of these strips and kind of pull it through the kind of puddle. Um, it's a lot easier with a puddle than it is with marking and it's actually also a lot more reliable um, with like a proper puddle. If it's just like a few marking drips, um, rats have rats kind of marking urine has a slightly different makeup than it's kind of like proper urination urine. Um, it has more information in the marking urine and that's carried on things like protein so you wouldn't expect protein to be a little bit higher in something that was um kind of scent marking versus something that was a proper i must release my bowels um so that's what you do cold cold work surface cold works better um uh, just like us when we go outside in the cold air and suddenly need the toilet um it's a good way and straight up after bed when their bladders are still full is a good time to do things um however Rats do not always cooperate with this. Um, if you're struggling, I'll just put the lid on this because I need to balance rats. Um, if you're struggling, get a clean plastic carrier or a show tank, something small and plastic. Uh, please don't eat my urine strips. And then, um, no, you are eating my urine strips. Right, they're moved again. Put them in my pocket. Um, yeah, so. Put them in this kind of small clean plastic carrier don't put anything in in as a lining for that and um, leave them in it for a bit and just keep an eye and as soon as you notice them do a puddle take them straight out of it because what tends to happen is they'll do a puddle then they'll do some poos and they'll trample in it and then it'll be a destroyed urine sample and you have to start again um, so that can be a good way the other secret way is um, use your phone screen. <laughs> this is a bit gross, but rats have a habit of liking to liking peeing on your phone. You've probably noticed like they kind of just leave little dribbles across it. It's usually marking, but when you get into the desperate desperate states of trying to get your rats to pee on things, um, it's not a bad way. Um, an, a, an old CD, one that you don't like, <laughs> that's quite a good tool as well. I've seen it on remote controls as well, but the kind of rubbery buttons spoil it a little bit. But try different surfaces, it can work. Sometimes it'll take you a few days. Sometimes you'll literally get them out and you'll get a massive puddle. Um, if you're really struggling, take them to the vets. They normally do a big pee on the vet's table straight away. And that's quite handy. Um, but you can do this yourself at home. So um, that's how you get the urine out of the rats. How you get these, like I say, um, Amazon sells them, Google, urine analysis strips, urine multi-reagent strips, anything like that. And you should find plenty. So when you're looking to buy them, what you want to get is you want to get them with several different um, kind of test criteria on it and the really important ones from a rat point of view which i'm going to go into um, in a bit of depth today is um, protein um, i'll explain why later um, blood and glucose there are other useful ones on there that you might want to kind of like include but as long as it does protein glucose and blood that will give you the majority of the kind of information you need and um, with the rest of the figures on there um, they don't tell you a huge lot um, for rats 
because they're not really sensitive enough. Um, in humans, for instance, leukocytes is really useful, but in rats it's a bit crap. Um, it can indicate an infection in humans, but it's a bit of a misleading reading in rats, so I would not rely on that on its own. Right, so protein, blood and glucose. So why are those useful? So protein is one that I probably use the most for. Protein is linked with kidney degeneration. Kidney degeneration is common in older rats. Um, and it, you basically see a gradual loss of weight, loss of condition. The rat just looking a little bit out of it, not quite kind of like um, as kind of glowing, fit and healthy as normal. Um, when you see that, then in a young rat, it's normally a urine infection. In an older rat, it's normally kidney degeneration. But both of those things can be checked with these, um, which is what makes them so useful. Um, and it'll give you information. And I will say it does not replace the vet. But what I find is really useful is to go to vet, the vet with the, with the kind of results of this kind of thing. Um, because the vet will, quite, they quite often keep some of these in themselves. Um, theirs might be animal kind of quality. They may be slightly more accurate. But um, in a perfect world, you want to take more than one test anyway. And that's because different times of the day, after different meals, um, rats will have slightly different neuro makeup. So kind of taking a couple of tests, um, let's say, four to 12 hours apart can be very useful um, and give you a bit more information. But the idea of getting started with it as soon as possible is really helpful um, because then by the time you're actually in with the vet, you've got two kind of worth of tests, like lots of tests done. If the rat then doesn't do a puddle at the vets, you can explain to them, you can take photos of the strips and show them the strips and take photos of the key that's on there. Um, and they can read much more into that and that's very helpful for them as well as being helpful for you because you know what's going on. Um, so protein, kidney issues, um, and that's quite a very useful thing to find out. Blood. Now this is probably the one that I use second most often. Um, urine infections are quite common in rats. Um, generally you'll see them looking yeah, a bit rough, a bit skinny, um, moving a little bit stiffly or awkwardly, um, and then you kind of like you you know a lot of people say you'll see pink urine i've actually found that in if you're seeing pink urine it's actually usually something different than a urine infection um it's actually either that they've eaten some beetroot and they're a bastard for that i've had more than one rat that i've seen pink urine got the dipstick out stuck it in there and it's been absolutely clear of blood and it's like bloody beetroot and um, because it goes through the system and dies the urine like kind of pink or red or purple um and quite scary when you see it um but then other times, if it's actually blood in there, it's actually normally caused by something else. Um, because the levels of blood that you get in urine with a urine infection are very, very low. Um, it's high enough that when you're looking at, so blood sits here, it's this kind of orange thing. When you're looking at a bad strip, you will normally find it in this kind of higher end of the blood. But even when you're talking about the absolute kind of maximum um, dark kind of greeny colour, um, you will not be visibly seeing that in the blood in the urine um, if with a urine infection normally i will say um, when i see blood in the urine and it is actually blood it tends to be more often kind of like a, a bladder cyst um, kind of stones in the bladder um, bladder cancer something like that when you see invisible blood in there there's normally another cause because of the amount of blood that it would take to turn um, the kind of like urine actually red visibly red it's either kind of late late on in the process so as it's coming out of the bladder there's some kind of little thing little sore just shedding blood in there or it's something else kind of like much more invasive causing that because the reason you get blood in, in um, a urine infection is because of the inflamed kind of walls of the bladder and that doesn't give off a lot of blood it just gives a little bit trace amount enough that you can pick it up on test strip but not enough that you can kind of visibly see it so that's a kind of bit of something I've noticed. I don't know how factually that, that is, but basically every case where I've visibly seen the blood, it hasn't been a urine infection. It hasn't been fixable by that means. And I've seen quite a few um, urine infections and not urine infections too. So that's kind of the blood side of things. Oh, oh no thing. Yes. Um, go on, you can come on. Just one of you. Um, so that's blood. Next one, glucose. So glucose, um, indicates diabetes in rats and diabetes in rats is uncommon i will say but it does happen um, and it's something that's very important to pick up you'll, you'll sometimes even smell the kind of sweetness to the urine um, but you'll see a rat that's drinking an awful lot which interestingly is also a symptom of kidney degeneration um, and this kind of sweet smelling urine 
but just testing it, it will pick up the glucose on there. Um, and actually it's something that you can do a fair bit around in terms of controlling the diet. So it's really important to be able to pick it up and deal with that quite quickly. Go to the vet, they can give you a bit of advice on it and, and then look at a specific diabetic friendly diet. So those are the three main ones. Um, I should briefly mention specific gravity. Um, so specific gravity means um, how, how dilute the urine is. In itself, not hugely interesting, but it can tell you when a rat is particularly dehydrated. So they might not be drinking enough. Um, there may be other causes of it, um, but it's one that's very useful to find out sometimes if you've got a rat that's bitter. Um, but you may notice kind of natural variations in that. So a rat that um, has just drunk a bottle of squiggles will have very dilute urine. <laughs> A rat that um, has been asleep for quite a long time and, and is due a drink might have quite kind of um, undilute, I'm sure that's not the kind of correct term, but um, kind of quite dense urine. So that can be useful from that point of view. Um, ketones, in theory, that can be linked with heart problems and stuff like that. But I'll be honest, the only time I've ever seen a high ketone reading in a rat was when the test strips were old and they got a bit damp and then the ketone strip showed up as purple. So in itself, it's quite useful to have the ketone strip to, sh to say when you need to throw out the kind of test strips. Um, I mentioned leukocytes before. A lot of people will see kind of high readings of leukocytes and think they've got an infection, but it is really unreliable with rats. If you're seeing leukocytes and blood, then it's really kind of like indicating you're an infection. However, if you don't see the leukocytes with blood, don't rely on them on their own um, because it is, it's, it's really hit and miss. They can have high levels of leukocytes um, showing up and actually be perfectly fine. Um, so don't use that on its own. pH. You sometimes see a bit of variety in that um, and again it can be dependent on what they've recently eaten but in itself it's not kind of a particular cause for alarm bells unless you're seeing consistently really kind of high pH on there. Um, things like bilirubins, um, euro bil bil I can't even pronounce that, and nitrates. Um, I have never seen them change on a healthy rat. I'm sure it can happen and um, if you do see something like that it's worth getting it checked out. Um, but they're not particularly useful in rats. It's not something that you'd be commonly picking up on and checking for. Um, it is basically the protein, the blood and the glucose that you really want to be kind of conscious of. And the others can be interesting if you're nosy. Um, so that's how you use them and that's what they're for. And I really would recommend you getting some. Um, and it doesn't really matter. You could, this is a pack of 100. Um, I'll be honest, I normally end up using about 20 or 30 and then they start getting towards the end of the life. Um, you need to make sure, like it says on here, you need to read at about 60 seconds. Um, so count a minute after you've tested it and then compare it against kind of like, did I actually keep them? I did. I mean, these are a couple of days old, so they're not, not much use now. This is what I did thing and um, mug recently. Um, but you kind of like compare it and then move it along until it gets in line with it. So you can tell this one's a bit dodgy because the protein bits turn blue, but it's two days old. Old. Um, when I actually read it, it was negligible in terms of protein. Um, but basically, that's what you do. You compare it along and then you read what the figure is. Generally, if it's at trace level for things, it's probably not something to be worried about. But do repeat it just to see whether it goes away or comes back. Um, the only kind of trace level that I'd be a little concerned around his blood I'd probably test that a couple more times to make sure that there's definitely nothing there um, but in most cases like if, if you get trace levels of protein in the urine it's probably just marking um, that's quite acceptable for protein you really want to be getting it up to the kind of top three boxes on there um, and kind of glucose there's not much color difference between the two early boxes on there you're wanting to look at it kind of further along the um, scale but yes, yeah, so that gives you an idea. Really useful, would definitely recommend them. Um, that information for your vet as well for yourself. As for yourself. And it's one of those, um, when I've got a rat that I know something's wrong and I can't put my finger on it, it's the first thing I reach for, test, and that will either rule some things in or rule some things out. And even if it could just rule out that the kid, they've got kidney problems or um, a urine infection, then that is massively helpful in its own right because I know it's not that so I don't have to think about treating them and I can tell the vets this um, but like I say don't trust one reading try and take two and try and take them at least a few hours apart ideally 12 to 24 hours apart um, and then take that information to your vet to kind of discuss treatment um, or if, if it's kind of completely clear then start thinking about what else it could be because you've ruled a couple things out um, that in itself is very useful so 
that's it on um, urine analysis strips. Hopefully that's useful. And hopefully if you've not already got some, then you get hold of some. Um, you don't need to get 100. You can usually get packs of about 25, which will do for kind of the majority of people for quite a while. I find they last a couple of years. If you keep them sealed, don't keep them open because they'll get damp. And as soon as you see um, any of the kind of colours on the plain strip changing, then you know that the box has got contaminated. It's got a bit damp. So chuck it out and get some more. Um, but they are cheap. That whole box cost me, I don't know, about eight quid for a hundred. Um, it lasts me a couple of years, so it's, it's a worthy investment in my eyes. Um, it's normally a little bit less for 25, um, but not as much less as you'd think. But actually, given that I tend to throw away quite a lot, then it probably makes sense for me to get 25 at a time as well, um, if I'm honest. But that's it from me, and um, Twizzle has come to say bye-bye to the camera again. She said bye-bye on my last one too, didn't you miss? Um, so over and out from me, and I hope that was useful.